uh, attorney That's and me. a member of the committee, doing great work, if I may say so. My immediate left is one of the stalwart members of the production people over at MNN, George Sotorellis. Yes. And I'm Harold Shannon, the interim president of ACAP. And this is May 8th. What's the date today? I'd say the 16th. 16th, uh, 2008. And welcome to this. We're going to put it on the tape, talk a few things over here at this uh, relatively small meeting. So, um, if I could maybe get started, things are moving pretty quickly in terms of uh, cable television in Manhattan, right? And one of the things is that the whole cable, um, the, the whole public access or PEG access is uh, being, among other issues, is being in the process of having a, a franchise agreement being negotiated by what is called DOIT, uh, Department of Information Technology. Uh, telecommunications and Technology, a branch of the mayor's office headed up by Paul Cosgrave. They're in the process of negotiating for a number of public service paybacks by the cable companies, which seems to be either customarily or a matter of law. We want to talk to Carl a little about that. Uh, that they will be um, obligated to pay monies out of their earnings to what they call PEG, uh, PEG uh, access entities. And the PEG stands for Public, Educational, and Governmental, so that the services will come back to the people in those realms. And we are primarily involved in the public access part of that. The educational and the governmental entities are more well understood in terms of historical patterns within the, within the, within the society. And that's being negotiated now, and an interesting development just occurred that that do-it office has put forth a uh, a go-ahead uh, for the Verizon company to come in and compete with the two traditional cable television systems that affect Manhattan, uh, Time Warner and RCN, and they're going to have public hearings, uh, we're now on the 16th, they're going to have public hearings at the 20th in Brooklyn. I want to attend those and find out what the implications of it are. And that's the situation that we're in now. So we're sort of looking at public access as an, as an institution and we just say parenthetically, there's some 3,000 of these public access facilities across the country where monies come from the, uh, again, from the earnings of the cable companies to set up and meet the uh, capital costs and the operating costs for an entity that provides, in the case of public access, where we are, uh, to the people of New York, not to the government or educational institutions, uh, which I'm proposing, or I have proposed, is something that's quite unique in the in the development of communications in this country, and that's sort of where we stand now. And I'm wondering, Carl, maybe you could talk a little bit about this. This obligation, if I could, um, I've written a little one-page thing I put together, saying that I thought it was very unique in the history of communications that the corporations are encumbered, in a certain sense, to set aside what amounts to some millions of dollars. I mean, it's, it's, it's relatively small compared to their overall, their overall uh, revenue net of uh, taxes, which is the dialectic they have with the governmental system and so forth. But that they seem to have accepted it, and in these 3,000 entities across the country, they do routinely go through this process of negotiating with the local authority or whoever has the authority to do that and seem willing to be able to accept that uh, premise which is unique, it seems, to public, particularly in the case of public access, uh, unique to public access in the history of communications. They haven't had that obligation in telegraph, telephone, radio, local television, National television, CBS has no such obligation to provide for the uh, the people or the public. It seemed to emerge out of civil society having an influence back about 1970 when cable got started. They seem to accept it. And when does an arrangement like that, which involves you know the public access in our case, uh, become what I would call as a layman accepted law or is recognized as accepted law? Or is that able to be just um, challenged at any time by them? And there will be forces that want to do that, of course. But it seems to be that they accept that. 
And where does all of that arrangement that underpins public access institutionally stand as far as its place in terms of the legal system in the country? What do you have to say to that? You've been doing a lot of research. A lot to say on it. Okay, good. Please. And that is that, first of all, unless there is a local law or possibly even a state law, and I'm not aware of any, but I haven't searched for them. Mm -hmm. But assuming that there is no state law, assuming there's no state constitutional provision, and assuming there's no local law that carries over from one administration to the next, I believe that the only the only uh, way that we are getting money put into PEG channels and, and cable access facilities is by a voluntary agreement between the uh, cable company and the franchising authority, which is generally a city or a town or a village. Okay. And there is no requirement, as you and I have seen in federal law, that any town, village, city that is engaging in the franchising arrangement for cable is required to put in cable access facilities. There is, however, a ceiling upon the amount that a city can demand and receive from the cable company, and it's limited to 5% of the, quote, gross revenues, unquote, of the carrier, of, of the cable company, so uh -huh. that there's a ceiling so that you can't have municipalities gouging and saying, we want 50% of your revenues. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can only say that we want two, three, four, five, but nothing beyond 5% of the gross revenues can be applied to cable access. Okay. So there is no law requiring a penny, and you can't demand more than 5%. That's the way I read it from what I know. Could they, could they, if they wanted to, the cable companies say, why should this be encumbrance on that? We could use that 5% of our revenue for something we'd like to develop another channel or something and just say, we don't want to agree to this anymore. Is it just public relations that keeps them not in that quite, position? Not quite. Or Did is you? there something, uh, teeth, the law has some teeth that requires them to pay attention to that? W what's the value of a casino? in Atlantic City. What would you say the value of one of the approximately 12 casinos is? I can't imagine that. It's got to be pretty high. I just like, it's got to be billions, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. At least a billion or more. I would guess. Would I you believe know. that in Atlantic City, about a month ago, they took away the license from Tropicana? And who took it away the, and why? The, the, the legislator, the local, the, the local law in Atlantic City called up Tropicana and said, we are now taking away your license. Okay. They, that doesn't mean the building gets burned down. No. It means that they have to sell to somebody who's acceptable to the licensing authority in, in Atlantic City. Okay. The building is unique. Mm -hmm. they, they have a huge operation. It's got to be worth several billion dollars. They're okay. not allowed to run it after their... There's no renewal. They're taking away the renewal rights, I guess, and not terminating them on the day of the decision. Okay. Well, you have the same problem with the franchise here for... Cable. Cable, just view cable as another casino. That's all it is. It's just a monopoly that the city has a right to grant to a single company. They could grant it to ten companies, but it's not going to happen. They're, they're, they're able to... How about phone companies that give you calls right in the middle of when you're talking? Can you... Um, they're, they, they don't... Just kidding. <laughs> The uh, New York City and the cable company could say, you know, we just can't agree on the franchise because you, cable company, say that you don't want to pay 4 or 5%. And we in New York City, on behalf of the residents of New York City, are insisting that you pay it. So now if you have a stalemate like that, what mm -hmm. happens? Mm -hmm. We heard the other night what could happen. I mean, not there's, there's no threat of any stalemate here, so I'm just saying in theory. Mm -hmm. We understand that on, in September 2008, there's no more money unless there's an agreement. 
Yeah, they're working out a new franchise right, agreement but, but, on a 10-year but, 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 but what happens if the cable company says, we're not going to pay the 5%? It's like a man saying, and I New don't want to... And New York City says, we insist that you pay it. So in September, when the new agreement starts, there's no agreement. What happens? Uh, I guess that would be the end of the cable company. There would be no right to mm -hmm. even to transmit. Mm -hmm. You would have everything shutting down. MNM shut down. That it, every, no, not just MNM. Yeah. All cable would shut down. No license. The same way that Tropicana has to shut down, no license, right? Because the city has the ability to renew their ability to use... The city, the, the, the agreement, existing agreement was a 10-year agreement from yes, what I understand. Yes, 10 or 12. It, 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 it ends September 2008, is that correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah, I'm not exactly That's what we sure. understand. It was 10 years ago that they set up the one right. under which... So Manhattan if there is operates, no agreement in September 2008 to renew the existing one, what happens to the right to transmit cable to the customers in New York City? Well, I don't know about it cable. Ends. Could, could they, no, the peg thing... It ends. The, your, the, your, 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 your contract ends. You mean all cable? Everything is over. Oh, we I are don't understand that. that. Why couldn't it be that the only thing that would be over would be this provision for peg channels, because but the, they could still continue to because, put a home box office Because the agreement on. has 5,000 paragraphs, and all 5,000 end on 2000, September 2008. All 5,000 paragraphs come to an end unless they renew with a new agreement. Oh, that, really? that only may have 4,000 paragraphs. Uh -huh. Only 4,000? Well, we don't yeah. know. Yeah, right. We don't okay. know what it's going to have. But yeah. at the end of the agreement for this 10-year period, the license ends the same way that Tropicana lost its license. So there will be negotiation, if I may, there will yes. be negotiation. We think of PEG in right. that, or we think even right. public access within PEG right. after them. But it really is a negotiation for their right to be able to tap this market. The, the, to continue to tapping continue this market. Tapping this market if they don't agree. So both sides have tremendous pressure. Can you imagine the political pressure mm -hmm. if 600,000 homes have no cable as of September 15? Complete that, cable. Right. No cable at all. So that would be no uh, no home box office, no channel right. 13 coming it, it, over. The again. license ends. Okay. So, and they have the, and all the local authorities across the country, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and so, so it's forth, the same thing. have a similar thing. Yes. So that gives a tremendous incentive for the cable companies to want to come to some agreement. And it's likely that they would be have a much greater interest in that maintaining that. That would be would that be also the um, internet access and also the um, what do you call it the phone system well, that they're let, realizing let's, money for. Let, let's put it let, let's put it another way. Do you mm -hmm. think that Tropicana has an asset that people would be willing to buy? Um, Fine. So they can get their money back. Do you think that? Time Warner has an asset that a, another cable company would love to buy if given the chance. So Time Warner isn't really going to lose. I mean, not their, they're not going to lose the value of their facility. They're going to lose, they would lose a tremendous profitability. But uh, help me out here, but, Carl. But, but oh. the political establishment would probably lose out if they have one week of no cable. Yeah. So both sides have a tremendous incentive, truly, to lose the agreement. And if I could, Carl, you said, I hadn't realized that this <coughs> was think it through, thank yeah. you for that, <coughs> but uh, uh, if, 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 if Time Warner sold it to Comcast or some other platform, they still would have to have that agreement with the city Correct. in order to do it, so that right. would pass along. Correct. So you could buy the Tropicana Hotel, but if the rights to do the gambling doesn't right. go with it, and it can be denied, then correct. that means it's an empty shell. That is correct. Okay. And, and what would happen to the revenues of Atlantic City if one of the casinos truly shut down? Uh -huh. Atlantic City would fire 10% of their staff. Uh -huh. So there would be a tremendous political adverse repercussion. Could I ask you out of history, do they have that kind of a thing? Because we had to set aside certain vital services where there is a relationship. Between. I was interested in public access. I may be wrong. I may be totally off in the blue or something. That public access was unique in communications history. I reeled out all those other things, uh, you know, television and so forth. But we've also had water. We've also had electricity. We've also had... Other kinds of things like that, I can and give it you became a like, and if I may, those became like in the in the realm of things like water, and that it became what they called utilities. It has a certain kind of a treatment of that, and then in the case of communications, it became like what they call a common carrier. And there were certain traditions that were held like that when the bell was in place for so long. How does that relate to this thing cable that came along around 1970 
And what distinguishes it from a utility? Television and radio both had their requirements for public service. Mm. You, you okay. had to allow people a reasonable opportunity for issues to be aired, public service messages a certain percentage. There were statutory requirements which weakened, which got diminished over the time, and now we really have very little, if anything, it's a free market totally. Was that you like the have, fairness doctrine? Yes, the fairness doctrine, and, and other doctrines. You, mm -hmm. could, right, you could today have 60 minutes per hour of commercials, if uh -huh. people want. And we actually have that. We have, all, we have many all channels commercial where you have channel. all commercial. On the cable, And yeah. it's a free market. CBS can change overnight and have nothing but commercials. But CBS television, local television, uh, didn't have any obligation to set up facilities so the people of the city of Manhattan or the uh, borough of Manhattan had the ability to go and make a high cost television, multimedia production, and then set up distribution channels where that message could be covered. They didn't have the obligation to provide that to the people let, of Manhattan. Let, let me answer in a different way, because okay. I try to be unique in what I think of, mm -hmm. in what I say. Mm -hmm. Actually, CBS had a much more onerous obligation than Time Warner has. If you look at the number of people who had to receive the message of fairness and the times that CBS had to contribute its services, the public who saw it was much larger in total. Number of, of impressions yeah, was many times line. larger. Yeah. Okay. So they had a much greater obligation. The current obligation is a weaker obligation. To, to allow a few people the opportunity of seeing a show. But if I may, the yeah. public, it's, it's the people of Manhattan. How many people it's like the, a show? Well, no, no, it's not that so much. Is that the obligation was from, it may be something new in a certain sense. I'm not sure. I'm trying to understand it. It may be that it was for the first time ever, it was the, it, the P in PEG is for the people. So anybody in Manhattan that wants to go there, homeless person, something like that, goes there, and there is provided out of the earnings of the company a facility with the cameras and the editing and the, and the capital costs and the uh, reasonable staff and all of that is provided out of the earnings of the company. That didn't apply to NBCBS as a, as a local television entity. The Fairness Doctrine was something from the legislative process. And the then they had to get the cost to, revenue. And you could equate the revenue under the Fairness Doctrine and say that it was actually many multiples over the money now allocated to PEG. You think so, really? I think so. You think so, really? That's because, of, because of the cost per thousand impressions, you're dealing with many, many billion, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in the commercial television given away under the Doctrine of Fairness and public service message and, and service to the community, which was evaluated for purposes of relicensing. Now all they have to do is put up a certain percentage and let people produce as many shows as they want, and there is no requirement that there be an audience for those shows. I don't, yeah, and if I may, I don't think yeah. that fairness doctrine applies anymore. They had the National News they Council, eliminated it. Council where they were worried about libel. There was yeah. libel brought against that, that kind of thing they could bring. Uh, Richard Salant was involved with that, and they were concerned about that question of the fairness. But that means you're going to have your studio set up to have somebody who's a Republican rather than just a Democrat come into the set and do it. It's not the same as setting up a whole facility for the people, well, I would submit. I what, don't know. What about this other doctrine? Remember the doctrine that we used to have that said you couldn't have a medium monopolizing a community and you couldn't have so many television, so many radio, newspaper, all in the same market. Yeah, that's Why are we having Newsday being acquired by the cable operator? Well, they were going to try and also Murdoch was going to Right, well, they didn't, they didn't bid as much as and, they needed to. And the Zyka, there, 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 there are forces within yeah. the society. There are forces. I did a program with uh, our uh, Zaneda uh, Mendez, who is external affairs uh, for Manhattan Network, and I use the analogy, and that, that's what I'm saying, you're a legal person, you understand law, that the law of mobs, and it was back in 1920 that in the minds of many people, we just lost our heads and we gave the vote to the women. And a lot of people will say that was a big mistake because everything's gone to hell since then. We ought to take that voting right of the women, or we could carry it back further. There was a time when we had chattel slavery rather than just wage slavery. Can I, can I? And so when does the law Thank become you. something that is not able to just at the whim of one of the people who think of differently than what the law prescribes uh, can just, you know, say, let's invalidate, let's 
You know, when does it become a matter of accepted law? I, I think that it's accepted right now. And then, which, and then which right are, now, the women's right to vote or the cable television? The cable in Manhattan okay. now is as good as as anyone could ever in his right mind hope for. We have the greatest thing here, mm -hmm. and it's worth it's worth, we should even say that and emphasize it that all of our talk here is only theoretical. But yeah. but, but we have the best thing here, thank God. And we have new equipment. We're going to have financing. We have. MNN, we have the management of MNN, we have the producers, we have everything working in our favor. Here at Manhattan, that, 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 that is correct. Yeah. And what we would like to do, well, new equipment. Be, like George is tell, tell, tell yeah, about what new equipment is coming in. No, yeah, talk about Go talk, George. Yeah, BCAT. And yeah, we have BCAT, Rocknet, yeah. Top Mountain Queens. Yeah, we have the others. The others do. No. But at Manhattan Network seems to be going really well. It wouldn't have been doing it if wasn't George there yeah. holding down the fort oh, and doing uh, the production. Uh, Gloria and Willie. Glory and Willie and others too, yeah. and people helping each other. It's cooperative. Right. It can be, and it can all be done because the cost. I've been in television, cable access television longer than I guess anyone else in the country. My program's been running longer, and I can testify to the fact that if you wanted to do a two uh, a shoot like we do here, at the very minimum, if you were in the market, you want to do an hour program, it would have it would have cost the person who's going to put that together, or the money was. It would have been minimally at about five hundred dollars. Now, five hundred dollars isn't a lot to a networker; it's nothing, and it goes up to thousands if you get into the big <coughs> studio. But that made it a business. That made it a thing where a citizen couldn't come there just as something they want to do. But a Manhattan network, because the costs are being met by the payments from the cable companies through the processing, it is possible to make that service available to the citizens of Manhattan at no cost at all to them. And that's a different kind of model than one that fits into a private sector or either you're going to have a private sector making profit or you're going to have a government that's going to tax and spend. And the dialogue within which all of our news and everything seems to be formulated is set up something that's very new. And that's something that I think is worth thinking about, perhaps as a model that has legs as we start moving into the new era. I don't know. There's words digital. coming out of my head. We're going yeah. digital now. Yeah. All that's coming now. Yeah. yeah George, explain Digital? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going digital, all full digital, all digital, and getting rid of analog. But no, they still have the VHS, but they don't more, They only take digital for broadcast. Yeah. yeah, and we're going to be addressed on Monday here by the technical guy, and he's going to. They're about to accept DVDs for the. Pro I got Tom to be here. Yeah, there's a link between the op particularly the open source part of the digital development that's going on, but in a sense, cable tele. I can't get over this idea. That public acts, not the educational and not the government, because that's traditional back to 1776. That dialectic between those two aspects of all loci of power is either private sector or public sector. And they fight it out and everything. But now you've got the civil society entering itself in a way that has significant influence to introduce not just educational government channels that would have to be paid back, but the citizens, uh, civil society being represented. Is that new or not? And it's proposed that it was around 1970 when cable was coming with the ability to bring multi-channel capacity, the medium of abundance, it was called, the Solm Commission report. Something new was coming, and there's a new input from civil society, which is could be seen to be, in a certain sense, vast parts of what is called the people of the entity of which you're talking, rather than a Here, politically oriented. Here's a predecessor. Mm. Go, going back to Rome, I, I just oh, read. I just, I just, I just read Augustine that, or yeah. uh, I mean, uh, Republic. Or, I, I just yeah. read that the Colosseum in Rome had a seating capacity. Guess what? I don't know. Two hundred fifty thousand. No kidding. Yes, yep. I, I was astounded. My lord. Astounded. And oh. let us consider two hundred fifty thousand seating as comparable to Time Warner Cable in Manhattan. Well, not bad, got, right? Not bad. You've got you've got about five hundred thousand living right? rooms here. Now, so what is the likelihood that the emperor of Rome allowed its own Harold Channer to talk to two hundred fifty thousand people that totally were situated? Impossible. There? Totally impossible. Yeah, only the emperor. So, so what, what we have is MNN being a little back room in in the Colosseum, where a few people that happen to be on break from the main event of the Christians being killed, the lions, the gladiators, and all that. Uh, 
they got into the back room, and you may have 10 or 15 people in the back room listening to Harold Channer, while 250,000 minus 10 are out there listening to the emperor. How well, do we change that? I'm not sure that's exactly right, because that's a matter of choice. And now we've got, I, th I don't know, we've got Kit Time Warner here, and I think we've got something like 500 channels. No, but I'm talking about the audience. What, yeah. If you have the right to address people and no one shows up, there's a problem. How do we increase the audience? For well, one of, one, of the things that gave, one of the things that gave the emperor in, in, inordinate power is that he had inordinate power over the levers of power. And you have power, you have public sector, you have, uh, you know, uh, and then you have the market can do it. So if you have a market system where you can reach the people, you can reach a number of people, like your networks and that sort of thing, and you've got, uh, you know, product that they're going to be interested in. So you've got the stars that are going to fill that air, and they got an incentive to do that to get people watching so they can sell advertising and have an economic model that's viable, and they got a lot of, you know, uh, clout behind them and growing. You've got that kind of a thing. But, and there's nothing there for like what they call uh, uh, Hyde Park Corner in England, or a place for people to give alternative views, but it's still on the same, it's still accessible within the 500 plethora of 500, and then that's growing almost to infinitude, the number of, of uh, the, the whole the whole television thing is going to morph over into the cell phone universe, and we've got six billion people on the planet. Things are really changing. But it's the financing of it and the avoiding of the, for the citizen, this idea that it has to be a, a, a business proposition that involves a great deal of money, a nut, that they have to meet if they're going to do it, or entry level. I mean, you've got real free entry. Okay. That's the way a democratic system how, should act. How, how successful is community cable if only one person a day sees it? Well, let's think about that. What about that? What do you think, George? How many people do you think watches this? No, not how many. Don't... Assuming only one person a day sees it, which is contrary to the truth. But let's start at the worst situation. Mm -hmm. One person a day sees it, and we spend five or ten million a year creating all these programs for that one person. Who is that one person? I don't know. But oh, do you think uh, it's just, just any? Hypothetically. Uh -huh. If only one person saw it, is this a successful operation? Um, Oh, okay, that's a thought. That's a thought. One, 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 one point of view is that successful because it's running. How do we improve it? I want to market. I want to find a way to have the shows marketed so that we can have a library of shows, and that we can have people tapping into the library. We can have people recommending shows. We can have producers looking at the recommendations and shooting shows, having a database which was just announced yes. of talent the other yeah, day at right. MNN. They're going yeah. to put talent there mm -hmm. because there's a crew shortage. We need talent over there. There's yeah. a crew shortage. Right. It's yeah, because it's being that's done. what he said. That it's hard to put together. Well, it's different. If you're program. at ABC, yeah. do you ever go to ABC? Those people are all in a wage uh, stream. And so they're doing something and they're being paid. And if they don't do it, they're going to be thrown out the door and all of that. But at MNN, it's all voluntary mm -hmm. because the costs are not there and it's not within the market. That's a different kind of context and everything. Does anyone know of public access in Boston, Chicago, New York, and L.A., and San Francisco? Are we talking to one another? Not as well as we should. That's what ACAP wants to do, among other things, once we get to optimizing so, the website so and reaching out. Because the, the producers have interest that aren't necessarily that of the administrators so who get that money from the franchising process. We're fragmented. Well, we are fragmented. Are yeah, there sure. five boroughs talking to one another? Not very well. I mean, they don't. I mean, we don't have... There is not... I've done a lot of research, or quite a bit, within the limited capability, but there's a lot of sites for things like MNN and for the one in San Francisco, but there's virtually nothing for producers. Okay, here's what happened. The other day, a couple of months ago, when, there, when, the, when the public meeting was held in Manhattan for redoing the, uh, the, the agreement... Maybe 500 people showed up. There were five or 600. Five or 600. It was like it was in like a Frank Queens, Capra movie. In Queens, they had three, two, three people. Three showed people up. wandered down, and they yeah. probably came from Manhattan. Uh, they <laughs> probably <laughs> came up like an E train. It right. was the E train crowd. Yeah. The computers. Yeah, but what, I don't know what that says except somehow it says, it says that we are marketing. It, it you know. says that that there is no communication. <laughs> Well, there's the there's not, oh, and also, good. if I may, George, uh, you know, we're in touch with those people down in, uh, and it, it, if you've got a thing, and it involves millions, it's not just a small little cracker jack. Uh, if you're, there's a system in place 
The cable company, and I can see where the cable companies would see it even as a PR plus for them. I can see where they could write it off that way in their mind. But anyway, there are places where they set up that arrangement, they get the capital cost, they get the cost, and then some local power broker, some mafioso oriented guy in the low, and I understand down in Austin, for instance, a new group took over, they throw the producers out the wall, at the door, they bring in ad uh, makers, and then they also charge to uh, teach somebody how to make a camera work, and they bring in these market principles, and we've got to do all this, and how do we guard against, and so we got a good deal in Manhattan, but what about the health of the of the cable access movement itself to where the costs are met so it can be free to the producer, and that's something that's important to uh, vouchsafe. Okay, I, I worry about the who's looking at it as much as I worry about the payment. Okay. The payment okay. we have Why covered here, the payment we have covered here in Manhattan, mm -hmm. so I'm looking for marketing as the way of, of taking what's happening and making it more successful. Okay. In the other areas, we have to worry that they, they may not have enough money to even do the job that we would like to have happen. Then that's something we should research. What's happening in terms of this franchising thing? Does it vary? Do we know? We have to do some research. Does it differ? Like in Chicago, do they get one-third of one percent? Do they do that? Do they get adequate? There are places where they don't get adequate. What are the rule? What are the standards? What is there a standardization no standard. of public access that could be no, uh, no? But in the name of the producers, could the producers maybe not only keep the ethics of the thing and realizing you're in a situation those costs are met. Now meet them. Don't go out and buy yourself a yacht because you're on some team that's getting a big franchise from a cable company and take care of your own. But it's being done according to certain best practices. Do, do you agree there's no standard in, in the five boroughs? I'm not sure. Not that I'm aware. There's I just no don't standard. Well, there must be some standard, right? There must be some minimal standard that's there. I mean, they're going to call themselves a public access, even though it may, might vary. <coughs> we happen to have a real good team here, it seems to me. We, we uh, understand that the other boroughs, the other boroughs don't have what we have here. Well, they should. They should have. So what about Chicago, St. Louis, well, and all that? I, if, if the other four boroughs don't have what we have here in Manhattan, mm -hmm. you can rest assured that very few people in the country have what we have. Okay, how about the idea that there might be better systems that we have? There are people that have better practices that are more. There's some, th you know, that's the kind of thing. And how do we set the practices and who can enforce or by public relations, huh? enforce that those systems aren't just being uh, ripped off by local political power groups, whether from the private or public sector. Let, let's take a small town of... of uh, Los Angeles? No, uh, let, 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 let's take Boys Town, Nebraska. Okay. Do they probably have a cable set up. Yeah, they have cable. More than likely they have it. So the, the legislators, and I assume there's more than, uh, you know, there's five or ten people that or the legislators in that town, they reach a deal with a local cable company that we're going to give you $50,000 to set up a studio and, and allow people to produce. Now, you and I know that 50000 is nothing. Mm -hmm. But if that's all that the, uh, that the legislators are required... Or the granting authority. Right. So now, what do we do? Do we go in and tell them they're wrong? What do we do? What do? What should our attitude be along best practices lines? Well, or what are you going standard? to do about it? It's a ten-year agreement now, and it has yeah. ten years more to run. What are you going to do now? Well, one of the things that I think we ought to yeah. do is get ourselves educated what the reality is. I just don't know what the reality is. I have to admit it. I don't know what the situation is in Wichita and that. But these are big cable companies that have the franchises. Eighty-five percent of the television goes by cable now, whereas it didn't at the beginning. So it's got to be a very big business, and it's very lucrative. You, you know what I think? I, I, I'm a lawyer, and, yes. I, and I'm an antitrust sure. lawyer. I'm right. a lawyer that tries to promote competition. I think competition is what we need. Okay. If we can show <coughs> MNN that cable really had, cable access has meaning to the public, you're going to have the, the you're going to have others in the <coughs> United States finding out about it and demanding the same thing. But if we can't show them that, then why would they want what we have well, I, if it isn't producing as much as I think we could be? Producing okay, I think you're right. We should be. It's like a marketing right. thing or a PR right. thing, and everything. Right. That's right. So but we I ought to be. We ought to be mm -hmm. developing our. Marketing, we ought to have more people interested in cable, and how do you get more people interested in cable? Well, let them know. Uh, do, about do you it. think that, for example, that a that a uh, 
a, a show. I mean, there's, there's a million different problems that people had, and you're not going to interest ABC or CBS in having a show for each of those things. This is where we excel. We excel. It's called democracy. We excel in filling the void that the that the mainstream commercial. can't do. The commercial stuff we can't do. Okay. But we can fill the void by having a lot of things. But what good is it if we have one million shows parked here that no one knows about? So well, we need a database to people, so people can find them. And we have access to where we can get those databases well, now. Within that's what the we ought to be working on. And we, and we yeah. ought to be helping people realize what some of the problems are. Mm. If people in New York City have a problem that they're losing their homes through the foreclosure, how about shows that are inventoried on specific problems of foreclosure and how to solve them? Well, well that's something. Okay, that well, there's a million things like yeah, that. That's what we ought to be doing. Yeah, we, 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 we can have one million shows lined up. We only need the producers, and actually, we would well, need there, more there are, there are real estate shows on. Okay. Yeah, but, but yeah, you know, uh, it's Senate, more Senate, specific. Uh, yeah. More specific because the, the shows. There's a million different problems. No, there's and more than that. There's, there's six billion there's people six in the world. There's six billion different problems. That's and, a lot and, of And different. we ought to try to find out where we can help people by having shows that help to resolve those problems and then let the people in the public know that we have those shows to help them with their problems. Okay. Because we may have the shows, but no one knows about it. So you need well, marketing. But that they're there, and particularly their archive. We've got the YouTube, we got other right. things, that Blip, we got other things right. with their archive. So it's there that we can draw upon. Right. And it's like called democracy. Yeah. Democracy is a mess. Most people say they didn't want to let anybody yeah. without property vote when they began this republic because it's just the unwashed masses and you don't want to hear all the, the, the clamor and that kind of stuff. That's but democracy is different. How about, how about a show on this? That my, my computer is slowing down. I have a PC and it's slowing down. Yeah. Is there any way that I can... What should I do to be able to speed it up? Sort of like a Craigslist? Of well, it, would that be a show that people would look at? I yeah. think they might. Well, don't you? Why don't we have that show? Oh, I don't think we? it's a good idea. Do we have it? I don't, I I don't know. know that we do. Well, yeah, we, we need a we, database. You know, you got to look on the program. Where now. do you begin with something? A database. A database. So that people can go online on our website yeah. and say, <laughs> RAM, PC, Speed up. Well, uh -huh. Don't we already have that? When you say our RAM, when you say our, we don't have no, it. No, we don't. When you say we no. have a, uh, on they, our, they, they, that's uh, only a calendar for the future, but not what is stored from the in the room. Right. Oh, okay. Don't and when you no. no, and when you say our website, you're talking about ACAP. Yes. Website. Okay, we no. got an ACAP website. People would let them know if anybody's watching this. ACAPTV.net. It was put together by Anna Vitale, and she's very interested in having it. And the first item of our first meeting that came about 10 minutes after we adjourned came from this gentleman, Carl Pearson, and he said there's a number of suggestions that came to mind. He concentrated for a half an hour or something. And the first one was optimize the website because you've done a lot of work with the website. You know the power of that. And I think that's really important. I spent seven hours today on my own website. I have 100 websites, and I'm moving. 100 it. websites. I'm moving it from. I'm moving a whole. I'm moving 99 of them. Uh huh. It, that's in one host. Uh -huh. I'm moving it to a different host, and I ran into a problem. They won't allow me to do it because my first host is already hosting it on the new host. I didn't. I didn't know that. Oh, that's the very complicated. I wanted to go yeah. direct. You mean in terms of the server or the host? It's it, 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 <coughs> the host I'm going to is is the second most popular host in the world. Oh, okay. At least in the United States. Right. Very good. Uh -huh. And I went there from the first. I, I'm switching from the first to the second. Right. And when I get there, I, I follow their software and I add the things and they reject it. And they say, your name is already on our website. I said, how can, our name, how can my domain name be on your website when I own it, I'm not there, and they say it's already here because your current host is hosting it through them. Okay, that's something you know. <laughs> Did you understand all of that? I do. I finally I, I untangled it. I yeah. finally untangled it. That they, that there are different levels of hosting. <coughs> and okay. somebody can be a host and you not know it, that they don't host it on their own machine. They host it on someone else's machine. And that machine happens to be the one I selected. No. Well, I think that's a really good idea yeah. to use all these cyber things that are coming along. But, I mean, I think the, the fact that there is not, if I may, I don't think the fact that there is no... A website uh, in the United States of America where you've got 3,000 systems. 
We have something like uh, 3,000 producers that come through Manhattan. No, uh, I don't know if that's across 3, the country. Or 5, maybe like five. 3, 5, okay, maybe 5,000. Maybe 5,000. Okay, a lot. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't come in and right, use it right. and everything, but it's there, and it's a system of distribution. But that begins to be an awful lot of human beings, and we're getting a lot of complaints from people across the country that the way their systems are operating are not really in the interests of the producers. I think there's a good chance to be able to bring the producers together, and maybe it's the producer. And also, if you have a certain kind of uh, reading of the significance, uh, I don't want to use the word idealistic, but the potential for being a pattern that has ramifications about the whole organization of society that public access as a template has, and you'd like to vouchsafe that, I don't think we should close the door by saying we should let all kinds of shenanigans go on by either not just only illegal or malfeasance. What's, I'd like to know a definition. I looked up a definition of malfeasance that it includes not only just something that's illegal or that, but it's something that's inept. What about when it's just they're, they're being inept in terms of the operating of these things? I keep coming back to, to strengthen the movement of access itself as well as the individual programs within any one system or something, and then maybe you linking know, them you know, up. You know what we ought to have? What? We ought to have a program or a series of programs that that explain the benefits of a community having adequate funding for cable access. All right, and, and then to market that and, and, and encourage every single cable system to to play that, and and that might help play that tape. Play that tape, and okay. that may help get the community to understand, but also to market our database in every community so people can see the value of what community cable can produce and for them. And you could link those databases up, couldn't sure. you? Sure. And some sort of a thing like that? But then, so that would be calling their attention to the fact, I would, again, I just feel ignorant because we've got a lot to learn. I still think we're three or four months out before we're really going to get going. What, uh, uh, what uh, aspect does the ACM play on us? Well, I'm not sure, George. They, 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 they they're should be. down there in Washington. They have a thing. You're familiar? Yeah. Alliance for Community Media. Tony Riddle's no longer in charge of that. He's not there. He's and they're having a BAI. hard time finding somebody to fill the chair. He's a BAI. Yeah, and that, yeah he's BAI now, pro, uh, Executive Director of BAI. Is Great ACM guy. a national organization? Or yeah, well, it's, it, yeah, it's supposed to encompass. The, that's the, com, uh, what's it called? The Alliance for Community Media. What is the they have a website. Who funds it? Yeah, uh, what is I it? think, I don't know. Maybe there's no funding. No, there's no funding. No, there's no funding. No, it, if there's no money, there's no project. <laughs> well, you know? got, if you think about it, you've got, um, you've got this system. The thing that makes it institutionally viable is the fact that they've been brought in on this franchising where there is money for institutional structuring outside of taxes. You or think that any, 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 any private any agreement is going to contribute money to them? I beg your pardon? You think that any cable operator is with making a deal with the municipality is going to write a check for 10000 to that group? To, uh, and yeah. I don't know that they would. No, but that they could... Um, I don't know. They may I, not I have funding. Well... It may be a labor of love. Well, in a certain sense, for producers, a lot of it. And it makes possible, that's something, that's another issue that comes up. It makes possible somebody to do programming that is not business. It is a labor of love. You need marketing. All right. The, the thing you really well, need marketing is marketing. Or, we, we have all, you know, I'm technically oriented to Yeah, a you are, stand, yeah. But marketing is everything. You, you can't, if you have some great skill and you're the best in the world, it doesn't do any good if you can't use it, if people aren't buying your services. Well, they don't know about it. They don't know if about it. It's marketing. Know. That, that's all exposure. we need is marketing. It, exposure, call exposure, it marketing. exposure. Call it marketing. Call, call, marketing, 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 location, location. 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 Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. It's just marketing, but that's what our website would do. Our website would market the ideas that people have for shows, it would market the talent that wants to go on the shows. Yeah. All of us have been on shows. Mm. It would and it would be us. a national website. A national website. National but website. all websites are national. They're all, they're they're international. all, they're all national. They're all, they're all on their web. Oh, right. But but mm. it would cater to the to at least the United States and, and anything we do here unfortunately or fortunately goes way out to the whole Everything world. else does. They can't yeah. public yeah. access off to all it's growing. But, but around imagine the world. imagine that we have the potential Potential of having a database of every cable access produced show from the 
from the beginning to the end mm -hmm. and where they can be found today. It's like a magazine. It's like a library mm -hmm. that we have that potential of having all these relevant shows, mm -hmm. encouraging producers, offering awards for the best shows or the ones that meet certain standards that we want or something like that. Okay. There's a lot we can do. Okay. And, and, one, yeah. one, one, one thing I bring up there, if I may, and it yeah. may be sound a little bit along that line of uh, people doing something for the love of it. Uh, one of the pioneers of public access is uh, Dee Dee Halleck. I don't know if you know Dee Dee. Mm -hmm. Dee Dee Halleck uh, has been around forever, and she was great. They started a thing called uh, Paper Tiger uh, Television, Paper Tiger. and they also started a thing, Deep Dish. They were one of the first people who started distributing programs. But it used to be in order to distribute a program, there was no Internet. You had to do it through a nine-meter dish, and you would have to download and all that. And they started developing uh, and distributing programs. We have Free Speech TV that's doing that now. You have Amy Goodman tapping into everything. You got Dish Network and that kind of stuff. But she was doing it, uh, Paper Tiger. And this is the thing that's interesting because when you start thinking about it, the marketing is crazy Eddie. We got a deal for you. We've got a winner. We've got Tiger Woods. We've got this. They're going to find the winners of the stars. And the whole television medium is trying to find a star, a standout, a really important something, whereas one of the things that the public access makes possible is the people, okay? And the people aren't necessarily stars. And she used to have a thing where they could do it. They had, I love Dee Dee Halleck and everything, and she used to have a thing where they could have the chroma, the, 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 the Chiron with the fancy flashy graphics just like NBC. We could be a winner in that kind of marketing. And she used to deliberately just put the graphics on a pen, with a, a felt pen, and they had the ca camera way back, and they had butcher paper, and they put it on, and they showed that they were just taking this little easily done thing, wheeling it up and everything, and it was to encourage the people that they didn't have to be a star in order to be involved with television, but that the local thing, the kazoo band, the thing like that, that they can come in with their concerns and their interests and so forth in a very democratic way because not everybody wants to be a star or to be marketed. Okay. Or is relevant in that sense. It's just people. Okay, here, here's and there's a po possibility for that here, here in a very way. democratic way of seeing things. Here's one way of marketing mm. that over the years I've found out how <laughs> I can search for my own website material on internet and we can use the same technique here. Mm -hmm. That Assuming that we have a hundred thousand subjects, a hundred thousand videos or a million different videos that are on in our database. Now how, are, do we do how do we tap, how do we allow, how, what do we do to, to get people to tap into it? They only have to go to Yahoo or Google or Dogpile or one of them mm -hmm. And type in two things, a cap oh. and the subject matter. And that will limit their search to what we have in our database. Very few others would be involved. You've got experience with those. Yes, that, that's it. it's like a brand name. Okay, like how do you, if I may, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I, you keep going with that thought and everything yeah. like that. What system do we use? I'm just curious, what system do we use? to put this grid on reality by either keywords or something. It's what is the system we use in order to differentiate, let's say, kazoo band from something else? What we, we, we have the alphabet and we have a thing, we have a rock, no, we have what do you call it, Dewey Decimal, we have the IB, they have different systems we, by we, which we they don't, organize We that. don't need to, they, because... How the, do you break Dewey, down to 100,000 different topics? The Dewey uh, you know, Decimal the, was designed where you didn't have full text search, so you had to have human beings that would librarian types that would say, well, I think this is a book on memory. And in the Dewey Decimal System, 401.25S. Exactly. Yeah. It's so like we don't, we don't have that anymore. We don't need it because you, you search full text. Well, but in I the world, full know. text really? might produce, if you, if you put in PC, RAM, speed up, you will get more than probably five, five million hits. Well, I don't know how... If you try that right now, you'll get 5 million hits, roughly. Has that just been... If those, well, I'm just telling you that... It, mm. I, I, PC, PC RAM. RAM, speed up. You might, you might get a million or five... Somewhere between a million and five Are million. Are people talking about that issue? Or what does that mean? In a search. Yeah. Oh. There'll, be, uh, there'll be five, one to five million hits 
where you could look through for the rest of your life trying to find what you're looking for. But if you add the word ACAP, it'll come down to one. Oh. So it, it okay, bubbles that up. Sister has That's what bubbles up. Okay, that's Our stuff can bubble up right. because we have a dedicated website where the only material that you should find in your search is what is on our website because you're looking for so what you would set cable that, producers have done. Would that be the first thing you put in, ACAP? And then yeah, everything else comes out of that. You could put it at the end, but I prefer search-wise to put it in at the beginning. So knowing how that system works or how you can do that is yeah. knowledge and yeah. how to set the database up and the, and the formula. That Another thing, you know. a very important thing is SEO. Don't forget SEO. I have no idea. What is search? That? engine optimization that in our website we can have with search engine optimization using the right techniques the correct meta tags and using keywords different theories understanding that the that the search engines don't go beyond the first so many words mm -hmm. if, it, if it's beyond the first five paragraphs it doesn't get picked up they don't do full text searching. Mm -hmm. They take this much and, and they then index that. And anything relevant that comes after that you, is shit out of luck. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get picked up. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the techniques in search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. So if we have search engine optimization, we can expect that our website will bubble up to the top and instead of being now near the bottom. So that people that are looking for things will find us if we have proper SEO. Okay. That's just another technique that that's, we have to use. That's a technique yeah. and knowledge about how to get things yeah. up to the top of the list. It's a skill. It's, it's, it's an a absolute skill. skill. And it, 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 is there... I don't have it, but, yeah. it, but people have okay, that Okay, then we should be in touch. Maybe John Kowalski and some of the people we know are cyber-wise. There's a lot of skills involved here. Not yeah. everyone has them all. Look, George has a skill that all of us die for. You're, you, you have skills, and, and you have skills, I have skills, yeah. but we don't have each other's skills. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. right. I can't understand yeah. uh, the law, you know, that kind of stuff. So we, we have to use the website to pull together these skills mm -hmm. and, and, and allow us to march forward as a group mm -hmm. with a shared objective and using our different skills to reach there. Okay, that's really good. And then the, and there's certain things intrinsic to the existence of this thing. What do I, am I off base in trying to see ACAP, or not ACAP, ACAP is uh, Association of Cable Accident Producers. MNN.org? Pardon? I mean, MNN.org, MNN, on their website, has all, all our shows catalog. Yeah, if you put MNN, if you're doing, you talk to YouTube, you mean? Yeah. yeah do, you have, do you have a database of all your prior shows? I think that, uh, Available to the I public, do, I, I mean, doubt it, I doubt it seriously. Yeah. How does? I don't know. Well, that's because they ask us to, uh, it happens to be, MNN did, where if you just put at the end of all the keywords or the tags, you put MNN, capital M, capital N, capital N, and then NYC, then it goes right into their database. But, but, and who, can but who can search the database, me or just people at MNN? I don't know. No, I, I know. I think if you go to the MNN site, it's there for you. I mean, MNN.org. should be there, right? They're doing it. I, I will look to see if you can go back 10 years and find... Well, I don't know ah. if this was place 10 years ago. It That's what I want. I want a you want a total archive? Everything, yes. You want the Akashic record? I want a person that wrote something, uh, that, that, did, that produced a show that was interesting to a few people every year. I want every year people to be able to access that show. It doesn't so we're like a magazine and we're we're storing our material for for people in the future to go back and look at if it's relevant to them. So we have to have search so they can find this stuff. Uh -huh. You're absolutely right. And it just gets very confusing. It is confusing. I have a hard time keeping track of if a person any form, if a, I can't fill out the it's only a a few words that they input in a record when they have access to our website. And they say, I've just produced a show, and the name, the, the uh, URL, if it's uploaded somewhere, a description of the show, the name of the producer, the date the show first aired, and so on. A few basics about it, and then they close down, and the record is added, mm -hmm. and then somebody searches, and they want a show on, on seals, population of seals, for example. You mean the animals? Or polar yeah, bears. Not, not or polar bears. Yeah, I'm saying you need a heuristic it, grid on reality. It's no big deal. It isn't it, a big deal. It seems to be a classified <laughs> ad database. I had a, I had a, I had a fellow. 
two of those already. We got one of the producers over. You know the fellow who says I'm not your president? You know Paul? Yeah. yeah he's great. He's doing a lot of work on words. Yeah. He's using the word thing and everything. And I had a friend of mine, I, I, and this is something interesting. I had a friend of mine who was a young man, and he was very interesting. He was going to, he wrote a book about Apollinaire in 1905. And he wanted to start, he wanted to know about the architecture, to write the novel. He wanted to know about the architecture, the costumes, so the things would be accurate. So he started making out a list of different things that are relevant to him in terms of that. And he arranged it in a certain order. And then he carried through with that. He got imbued with it and became over-obsessed. With, uh, almost, he, he, and he, he came up in the end with a book that I use practically every day. It, it took him hours and hours, and he got pink slips for, uh, coming like snowflakes in January, but he finally got Random House to do it, and Random House is the best lexographer, and what he did is he put a heuristic grid on reality. And so instead of things being alphabetical, like they are, he got. He had a system Not about Wilbur. Rea- George Wilbur. Pardon? Wilbur. Wilbur. Yeah, that's the guy that has the two. I don't know that. Oh. But anyway, he did it, and it started off, and he had a. So he had, you know, a, a thing, and so that it ended up to where, like, instead of it being alphabetical, like it ended up under a boy was sub down like this. Right, right. It ended up with, like, say, for instance, nautical terms. So it ended up, these are nautical terms, so jib, and blah, 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 and they were all characters. Anybody Wilbur. put a whole grid on that, and uh, Bill Sapphire said of him, he was the first one to do a serious treatment of the English language since Roger. Now, I don't know who's done that. I don't know where the thing is, is that it has a system that you Kenneth can put Wilbur, on reality. Uh, that maybe Kenneth, Ken Wilbur or something, but there's a name out there you should look at. Mm-hmm. But there's a new thing that's being touted as Web 3.0. And that's where you have a a subject and an object, a a predicate. I mean, there's there's a a way that the computer will analyze a website page and determine if in relation to your query, your keywords, whether this website is more apt to be relevant to you than others. That's very important. That, that's, this is a Web 3.0, brand new, that's coming up. Yeah, well, that would, I, I think it yeah. would, but I don't know where we repair to, because you can go to the source, or you go, I go to the word menu, and he's got a certain the, the way of codifying knowledge, if, uh, all knowledge. If, if you put in the word seal, S-E-A-L, and it comes up with 10 million hits, but if you had furry seal, it would understand a little bit more about it, exactly. and you, you would be yeah. reduced. So th- this new method of analysis can wipe out the most of the ones that are unwanted. Most of the returns that are unwanted can get eliminated, so that your real search bubbles up, and you can be more apt to find it. That's, Think, that's Web 3.0. Okay, that's um, a, that's coming out now. So, and that must be that must be yours. Someone can be, that must be the way computers work. Is Boolean logic or something? They or they've got some sort of a system that keeps all that stuff it together. It sounds like it's either artificial intelligence or it's, it's relation uh, fuzzy logic, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, we're getting a little far afield, or are we, from access? I don't know. I mean, it's, but that is a, that's the thing that we got to think about. And then you've been researching also, back to that thing about the franchise. You went right to the U.S. code when I... I sent you something, and you research, and you knew right where to go, and it was very interesting to me because it went boom, 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 very logical, right to the exact paragraph. Yeah. And they got a system. Legal minds think that way. I mean, they're able to put things in. It's like an engineer or a mathematics or something, where they've got the codes and the rules and the franchise agreements. Congressmen and the, don't draft laws. They hire people that are skilled in drafting statutes. A congressman says. I'd like to have a statute that, that gives away $20 billion to automobiles. So then they go to the legislative assistants and they then des- they design do. the statute. They know how to write it. I've written this, several statutes myself. and I, I Well, but not that they were ever adopted, but mm-hmm. I've, I've made my own effort at, at drafting statutes. Well, I, I wrote 29 statutes for the petition. Are these age long? For the, for the, yeah, for the initiative, for the initiative I yeah, yeah, you have to yeah. yeah. What is yeah. the initiative? And, yeah. and you also yeah. were running for yeah. attorney general, yeah. and you have a solid understanding of how there ought to be some attorney generals in every town 
to represent the rights of the citizens rather than just enforcing their obligations. See, the, which is a great idea. See, the, the, since the, we're in the business of trying to promote democracy. The, the attorney general of, of any state at one time, going back years and years ago, had both the criminal and the civil power of that state or, the, or country. And in the United States in about 1847 or whatever the year was, this power, the criminal power, came down to the county level where we started electing prosecutors mm -hmm. that held the power of the attorney general to prosecute. The attorney general of New York State does not have the power to prosecute. Mm -hmm. He has, no, no. The, the courts recently held that, that, that that's not within his power. That power has been given down to the to the locally elected county uh, county prosecutor, the okay. DA. But the we still have a, a centralized civil power of the attorney general, and that is the most awesome power. The, you said the, 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 the attorney power, general of New York is the second most powerful office in the country. The attorney general of New York State. Is the second most powerful elected official in the United States, right behind President Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> the Attorney General of the United States? I mean, no, of New, New York. York. Yeah. Because, because it's the financial it. capital. Mm -hmm. Second would be California, which is also elected. But the reason for that is that the Attorney General of New York State doesn't need a budget. Okay, we don't need a budget. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the Attorney dumb. General I'm doesn't need a budget. Because he, he sues and collects billions of dollars every year, so he doesn't need to go to the Assembly and Senate in New York State and say, oh, please give me money. But doesn't that give him a tremendous excitement? He That's has like 50 percent of the political power in New like York State in one person's hand. But is that like the speech The Attorney General. The, because the governor has to go to the, the head of the Senate, the head of the Assembly. They, they don't have any power. They all block each other. But the Attorney General doesn't need anyone's approval because for anything. Because he's going to get it out of the fines? Because, because he gets it out of the settlements. He gets the money settlement. out of the settlements, and he, has, he doesn't need any new statutes. Isn't there re room for, uh, uh, for, for, for violation of something? Like they had speed traps in the South where well, they trapped you? Spitzer, they, the Spitzer, more you find, the more money you've got. And Spitzer all that. attacked some of the financial interests on Wall Street, yeah. and as a result, they rewarded him with becoming governor. They took him out of the attorney general and made him governor. governor and he forgot that he no longer had any power. Advanced to his level of power. He lost his power. Yeah, right. right. Like being a <laughs> governor, the attorney general is more powerful than governor? Oh, absolutely. He thinks so. I he think thinks so, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What, how do you think he became governor? Mm. That was a ridiculous move, though. Mm -hmm. be, be, because you then have a shot at becoming the president. That's the reason you go up there, but that, you lose your power when you get to become the but governor. But you also yeah. propose that there be attorney generals established in every town. Every town. And that their and obligation village. is to represent a, a place where, like, I don't want to say okay. ombudsman, but a place where the citizen can go to assert their rights and have an officer okay. who's going to assert their rights, and that's democracy. Let, let's look, first of all, at what uh, a I'm leveling is. the playing field. A prosecutor is somebody... Like that, public that, access can level the playing a field. A prosecutor is somebody that takes away your money, your livelihood, you lose your family, you go to jail, you become gay or whatever when you're incarcerated and you become tattooed, It's not, and you move upstate because the deal is that we... That we that we breed him and convict him in New York, and then we send him upstate to ride for the next 20 years, and that's a deal that's been made between upstate and downstate. That they, that the that's what, and there's a growth there. of interest. They, they, they're dependent on the jails up there. Uh -huh. Well, that it creates a lot of jobs, and a lot of jobs spring from jobs. That is correct. Mm -hmm. There's there's a there's an unfortunate uh, explosion of this, and as I've said before. The, uh, the United States has 5% of the population of the world, and we have 25% of the convicts. People in jail that have 25, yes, 25 percent, high. yes, of all the world's prison that population. Got about but other years. other countries kill them. Don't forget that they don't they don't put them in jail. They kill them in some in some cases. So, Not much appeal there. So maybe it's better just being the 25 percent instead of having the other statistic. Yeah. The other statistic. But widening, it's, it's it's sort of wandering away. We're supposed to be talking about cable and all these communications. I had in this little paper. I said, if you have the means of communication, you're setting up a system where <coughs> you can be communicating outside of the strictly private sector, public sector, globally of power, it's something for the people. That's what you want to do with the Attorney General thing, in a way. I want the, 
because the prosecutor breaks up families and, and enforces the duties of people, even though it puts them in jail and causes them to lose their property, family, and life, mm -hmm. the civil prosecutor hey, would be enforcing their rights. The no, Are you want me in that box for him? No. The, the civil attorney general for a town would be enforcing the rights of people, the rights to a job, mm. the rights to help, rather them. than enforcing the right. Exactly, 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 right, exactly right, which right, they do exactly. now. It's, it's, so, it's sort of like, yeah, and then there's big changes needed in terms of society because there's great injustice. It's all part of President Carter. Do we live in a just world? Of course not. And the interests of those that are powerful have to be protected. We were talking about philosophy of law, I guess. And they'd be like the conservative anchoring, but there ought to be a place where the the folks are going to be have a. We don't have a democracy. Can you have a political democracy without ha when you have an economic plutocracy, or you, is you, it just a? It destroys uh, democracy. You, you have to have. But a we middle do have class, a At least the middle class you need. Yeah, and that's, and I suppose that the poor will always be with us to some extent. But if you eliminate the middle class, you you destroyed democracy. There's some nobody people think we're doing that for. now. There's some people think we're doing that I now. Agree. And the the assets are all owned by a relatively small group. It used to be kings. It was emperors and then kings, and the serfs were wallowing around in the mud. And most of the people are like serfs on a feudal estate, where the bankers and the assets are all held by a tiny plutocratic class in this economy and all economies around the world. Isn't that the case? It is. Why okay. why wasn't Community Cable doing anything about Eisenhower's warning when he left office? Remember? There wasn't any cable for one well, thing. Okay. It was a technological era. What did Eisenhower warn us about? Well, the industrial, military, and, industrial and what's happened? Military, he was industrial right. complex. He yeah. was right. Right. Military, industrial, look, financial. Look, look how much he understood so far back then, and what have we done about it? Well, he Nothing. was a five-star yeah. general. He had a strategic way of yeah. thinking about yeah. what's happening. Yeah. But the technology's evolving so quickly, and it's something new coming. Are you, are we optimistic for the human prospect, or what? We got weapon systems that can ro wipe out the whole species. Saw Ted Turner on television the other day. Great interview with him. He's a good guy. And he was with uh, Charlie Rose, and he said the number one issue before all of humanity now, without any question, is, and he was saying, he said uh, that, uh, that the weapon systems that exist now, and this is something that could be researched and modeled and so forth, uh, could wipe out all of humanity within a half an hour. The, the, problem, if with they were is, the problem with that is how do you control it? It's gone. It's, uh, it, no, but it's a new capability that did not exist in our lifetime. They couldn't do. There was nobody could have set off such a thing at the time of the Second World War. And now, apparently, that is the okay. ontologic reality. Okay. Now, existentially so significant. Can anything be done about? it? I don't know. That's what I'm just trying to say. It, I mean, first of all, it would be good to model if that is the case. I, I, some people say no. There'd be a few survivors in New Guinea or something. If they if they did it, but that's an exist. That's the, the reality of change. Then you can also look and say, is there something on the positive side that is equally existentially significant to that reality? And I've always thought for about forty years that the things that Bucky Fuller and some others, Murray Bookchin, said that we may actually, in terms of capability, unutilized productive capability, you might call it, because we have outdated systems growing out of it, that we've actually transcended scarcity. It, as an ontologic reality, as a, a not as a reality, it's not the reality, but it is a capability. It's just that the destruction can't be tested. But we could test the idea that we could have new economic, political, organizing assumptions and so forth that tap into this new <coughs> reality that's dawning. Maybe Mr. Obama's going to bring that kind of a context or something <coughs> where they can talk me, about real democracy. Let, let, me ask, let me ask the two of you: Have you ever heard people talk about their Belief that it's essential that we cut back on the population of the world. Have you oh, heard yeah. people well, arguing yeah. about that? Yeah, because I've been reading about that. Began. There's a lot of people saying that the world cannot keep, cannot sustain an ever increasing population. Well, Malthus said it, didn't he? he said it's all growing arithmetic, uh, the, and the population the growing. The food geometric. problem right now: rice going uh -huh. up, and flour going up, and other commodities going up. It's it's becoming. That people are, are getting squeezed out of life. It's like a movie called Soiling Green. Yeah. Soiling Green. Or you they're, getting sque they're getting squeezed out of life because what they malt? need what they need to live, and they're they're living in, in areas that are highly highly vulnerable to 
typhoons and volcanoes and earthquakes and stuff like that. Well, that Where, this is part. Some people claim that it's part of a planned war. Is is uh, absolutely helping out. Oh, or AIDS or something. You could AIDS use. and all that. Maybe so. that's what the Burmese generals are thinking. The way part part of the problem to solve the population is to let the people die in the cyclone two hundred thousand. Right. So there, there is Cyclone 200,000? Yeah, that many, that many guys so far. Oh, so, oh some, I some see. Some people, oh, let them die. Terrible. Some people yeah. are, are cheering what's going on because it's part of the scaling back right. and that leaves more resources for the people. That if there's a natural disaster and probably Of course, they're people. figuring out how they're going to remain and, right. and let the other people be the ones that yeah. make the sacrifice. Well, the 144,000 <laughs> are going to get into heaven. You know, they think after Armageddon, the 144,000 are going to get in to be elevated up to the other realms. The Chinese, Chinese used to have only. population control, and they don't any longer. They don't have, have the one child to, anymore? No, they, I, don't think, I don't believe they Well, don't. with all due respect, I've looked at the population figures and everything. They say, the, the people at the UN and others who study this kind of thing, they think it's going to level off. It's going to level off the rate of producing at about 9 billion around 2020. Why would it level off other well, than the why fact would that it? the resources aren't enough to... to well, okay, that's an in, that's a really important yeah, question. Yeah. That's a thing, and it, but that was essentially the Malthus thing, wasn't it? And Malthus argued that that they, he did that, and Paul Ehrlich and the population bomb and all that's been in the wind for a long time. And then they had the the Rome, uh, the Club of Rome, and you had um, you know you had Jay Forrester, the intellectual force behind Club of Rome. I did a program with him. It was very dismaying because, if I may. I was talking to people like Buckminster Fuller, and Buckminster Fuller was saying that um, through, e he called that term ephemeralization, that doing more with less through good design, that, or, or you take the, uh, the model of a computer, to have a computer chip that's in your watch now, you had a room this size full of vacuum tubes before the transistor and so forth, and that it's getting smaller and more powerful, and that you can have um, echo, you can have uh, more with less. Schumacher says small but beautiful, but it didn't be reduced. But you, you so so you don't have to rape the planet if you have good design and that sort of thing. Okay, okay that's haven't the figured thing. out the smaller. But stuff. the bigger thing that he said, the bigger thing that he said is that we were, and he had a graph coming out of World Game and others that we were we were uh, in terms of our collective capability. We were approaching a point where there were more haves than have-nots for the first time in history, and that we were destined to cross that line. He did it in 1952. We were destined to cross that line around 1970, and he claimed, lived out his life, that we crossed that line. That there were more haves than have-nots in terms of some measurement of haveness and so forth, which is very tricky and subjective. Uh, and so we were getting at that. And, th and then also through ephemeralization of good design, the chip. And what's, they're going to be getting to carbon-60. So we don't have to rape the, the planet. But Jay Forrester, who had the Club of Rome, I did it with him and I presented this to him. And he wouldn't say it on camera. I'll say it here. He's passed, I think, now. But he wouldn't say it on camera. And this was the argument. That if you look at industrialization and you got the people with those huge families in agricultural societies where so many of them are dying, that... When you had industrialization, say the Enlightenment and steam engine and all that, Hume and everything, that um, it led to a thing where they were able, they, they, they went to the cities and then they became uh, fewer families because so many of those people died from typhus and things, health was there, so that people had smaller and smaller families. So we have about 2% you know, of families, rather they used to have 13 kids and everything. So they got down. And he said, it, and, there, and then what about the leveling out? He said that the, that in the, the reason that, and the, this is even more worrying, he said the reason that the, can I propose we may get to a point where there is enough, which is a different kind of context than all our institutions presume, scarcity, doggy dog uh, kind of thing. He said the reason that the people who get into the modern world, they get on the fast track and all of that, uh, is... It comes down to what they, they would really rather have a Buick than a baby. That they're so alienated, and essentially what he's saying is that you have to keep them alienated because if ever you had a condition where they were not uh, threatened and didn't have to be on the fast track and do all that kind of stuff, 
they would they would realize what a wonderful thing a baby is, and they're not threatened. You have to keep them alienated and scared, or they will breed us off the planet. You gotta, you gotta keep That's their rents. Very... You gotta keep them paying rent. Oh, high right. rent. You gotta yeah. keep them working. Mm. Well, these are some of the fundamental. These are, but anyway, that's what he. That's what he said. He wouldn't say it on camera because it's so seemingly so, so, cynical. So imagine about a, the possibility of a liberated a, order imagine, rather than the imagine, nightmare of history. Imagine an objective for us of trying to produce the information that is findable by searching yeah. and available through video, which is a, an easier way for people to accept information. That's right. And, and to information that is helpful to them, entertaining to them, something they want and something they can find, and to build an audience and to create an audience for independent producers, for cable access producers, <coughs> and to encourage more and more people to be independent producers such as that, because there's a market for what they do. They, their ideas, a market for what? And a market not, in not money terms? Not necessarily a monetary no, market. No, okay, that's okay, it's interesting. It doesn't have yeah, to be money. It doesn't market. have to be money. But, okay. but I objected to what I heard the other night when mm. someone criticized our guest who was saying that he is trying to monetize what he does, because his, the argument of the the one who criticized was that he wants to do it all for free and he doesn't mind that big companies like Google or YouTube make money on it. That was Che. Yeah, but, yeah, but, Jay but was, I think Che was being facetious. I don't think I he really, was. I think he was being uh, I don't uh, believe he spin. was. I believe he was truly angry at the speaker who was saying that, look, what happens if the funding for this drops out and you no longer can do this? If you don't find a commercial market for your ideas, you're going to wind up having no place. You're not going to have those production. That is done. exactly what keeps everybody right. in line. That's right. what keeps yeah. the whole society in line. Well, is the idea there that there is that potential. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I, 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 I favored the speaker on that particular debate. I said we we have to keep our minds open and not disregard the commercial reality mm -hmm. that may exist out here because there there may be a time well, when there isn't enough money. Mm -hmm. to there's a cutback well, we on a lot of things, yeah. now, and we may find that we're going to be cut back as well. With all due respect, Carl, I don't think we have to keep any attention to the commercial reality because virtually everything in our society is motivated by the commercial reality. There is nothing but the commercial reality that takes first place. The first place you will be at the job when you're told to, to get the money so you get the It is so access. oppressive. Cable it access is, so oppressive. is at the very low end of that. Very no, few well, people in cable access make any, even make a penny on anything. Well, they you make don't have their time and money. They don't make a penny. Yeah, but do you see how subversive that is? Because the only ethos that really, when you get down to it, that matters is money. That's all there is. Everything is that. When you set up it, you go to university, you're going to make money. You're going to do this, you're going to make money. The first thing you teach the kid is you're going to go to school on time so that you'll learn again, get money to make money. It's all money first. Urgent things Dependent, and you better be self-reliant, you better be able to get your own, you better get out there and fight, you better do it, and that's what drives the whole society. Amy Goodman probably, more She's than doing likely, 99% likely, never intended to make money on what she was doing, mm -hmm. more than likely. I don't know the history, but I doubt seriously whether there was any effort or belief in her beginnings that she would ever make a penny and she did it as a labor of love but she did it so well and did it so successfully that it became very successful she's very successful and she's getting a and lot because she's wrong very wrong good that. there's nothing wrong in it and it should be that we should have our minds open and try to assist the, our producers by building their market and, and, and giving more and more people viewers an opportunity to find what they're looking for and let the market sort out the results. Well, okay, the market, but if you're, if you're in a situation where you don't have, well, if you had a situation where it's just the ideas, it's not a market. It is a market. There's a market it, it, for ideas. Yeah. I used to specialize in yeah, effective you, ideas. Yeah, but there's lots of ways to monetize. I've seen people want to monetize, and that's one other thing. If you turn on the television, all you say, we've got a deal for you. You can monetize. You can make money. Be a good investment. All of the, That's all there is. What about it's the just, talking heads? Anybody who does anything that is not for money is just called a sucker. No, the talking heads all talk for nothing. They don't talk for nothing. What talking heads? On television. The they get paid heads. by the entities that they're part of. 
Well, and that's a great way to keep control the, the, over what's going to be said. The talking heads are getting free publicity, which which translates into money later on. Are you talking about in the networks and so forth? Yeah, the cable and Charlie networks. Rose and that and all that. They it, get a lot the, of money. The panelists, the people that go on these panels, and then you have uh, these low budget shows that have four or five people. But you can talk. do you could do that. But suppose no, the not, people not cable access, but the regular. Well, all right, okay. cable yeah. access is unique. So what you can have is somebody there who's just talking, and it isn't got anything to do with the money, but they may have relevance. They may have relevance that those people have all got a paradigm that they're serving and they do it, and they may be out of sync with what's required. And what might be required is the free flow of free ideas that doesn't have anything to do. You can bypass the market. You can get past the market it is something that might be worth considering in order to distribute just the ideas, and you can do it, and they provide in cable access a way that you can do it without it being money. Now, if you can link that in cyberly with a network or something so that those ideas can bubble up to the society, then you've got something. But it's not to just reify marketing, okay. because God's sake, that's the only thing that motivates the economy. Did, did you, I mean, the society. Did you see in the past two days the person that flew... With the four jet engines strapped in his back. I did see that. As a matter of fact, that. I did an see an individual yeah. in, 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 miles in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Yeah, 180 right? miles. Yeah, yeah he, he flew. Yeah. yeah, he had a backpack. Yeah. yeah, and he had four jets, and they and he catapulted. He, he was thrown out of an airplane, and he turned on the jets, and he, he and he positioned himself, and he flew like that, and then ultimately, when he wanted to go to the earth, he did. A, he brought out his parachute and he dropped down and he was safe. Yeah. Uh -huh. So supposing that that individual or someone who knew exactly what he was doing did one or more cable access shows on how to create something like that and the, and all the testing and the costs and everything like that, would that be a good show? Yeah, sure. Would you object if that show brought customers to that individual who did the show? No, but I think he probably but, wouldn't want to go in access to do that. He would go to one of the networks. Not, not that the all. networks would put on that show. No, I, mean, I think uh, uh, yeah. I don't think yeah. the public television. So I, I think okay. all of us, okay, all of us ought to put down on on cable what we do. Yeah. And if anyone likes it and they need us, they can hire us. Yeah. Don't don't say that you won't be hired if, if someone wants a show host. Somebody wants a talk show, somebody I mean, wants to consult the, consultation. The, 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 the profit motive shouldn't be a primary purpose. If it happens, it happens. I think it yeah. should be eliminated. No, no, you can't. I you, do you think it should be entirely? eliminated. That there is ground to eliminate the profit motive. Don't and eliminate do the, it. You no, no. Need it. Well, you don't, don't eliminate to, You don't have to be singing that how good the profit <coughs> motive is because the whole damn system is based on that. The system wow. may be out of order. If you're talking about a situation in terms of exchange of information, <coughs> context of scarcity, and you've got a couple hundred thousand years of existing within that context, wow. then the prop, that makes sense. And then some are going to win, others are going to, you know, th that kind of thing. But if you're in a thing where you're transcending <coughs> scarcity, and you don't care about the profit in that market sense, I mean, the whole world is built on profit. You well, know, I think and it may be needed. Really Maybe it's another space that is needed, which yeah. is not based on profit, I'll, I'll but is assuming sufficiency. I'll compromise with you. Every producer at the end of the show should have a tag that says, "I would, I do not want anyone calling me to offer me money on anything that I do. I All do right. not accept any kind of money." <coughs> I would be willing and, to put well, that. You would, money. but most people would. No, I mean, most but, but I think not. that there's territory in that space that is thought ludicrous. <coughs> that gives us a take on the ontology and so forth that is what the future requires. I think that's exactly what has to be addressed. And it could be summed up in economic theory. The economics is all okay. Uh, the labor theory of value. And that informs virtually all economic theory from Marx to... And the progressive community is just taking the same kind of a thing. And they've got to have some sort of an alternative way to link people into an economy where the input of human activity is less and less every day, and the assets that make the production are all owned by a tiny group. They should have ownership as a way of having income so they can do what they want to do and not be subject to the impetus or to the uh, discipline of the market, which is all owned by a few people, like serfs on an estate. The, the, value Maybe. Of, the value of cable and the money they put into it is that we create information, which is the real coin of the realm at this time. Mm -hmm. Information is what is valuable, mm -hmm. and accessing it is what is valuable. The means of production are becoming less important, 
and it's yeah, important to right. us. You're right. But, yeah. but, but this information that we are sitting on, the potential for information mm -hmm. to have one million producers producing high quality, valuable, searchable, uh, locatable, useful information is one hell of an asset and we ought to be exploiting that. We ought to be exploiting and ACAP could be relevant in trying to build institutions yeah. doing things to go with that. Exactly. What do you think, George? Do you think ACAP's worth uh, uh, supporting and all that? And I think we should give out to... Well, uh, wait a minute, here it comes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Get the camera close up. Okay. Uh, we should give the ACAP, MNN.org. Now, what's the ACAP's website? Yeah, it's A-C-A-P-T dot net. That's the one that w that uh, uh, you've looked at it. Yeah. Right? yeah, and that's the one that Anna put together. She's perfectly willing mm -hmm. to have it optimized, and she would want that, but she doesn't want to hand it over to somebody who thinks they know what they do when they don't. Now who's running? And they don't have the really in depth now, knowledge. Now who's running his website? That's right Anna. Anna Vitali. She's running it right now. She still would want to set that up, and I've been in touch with her. And she updated, and she said it'd be perfectly right to have somebody hand over, uh, you know, that ability, but she doesn't want to hand it over. There's a lot of people who think they know what they're doing. Exactly. Right and so they don't want to have, uh, she doesn't want to hand it over until, but and that's, the, uh, that's the, very important. And the, ACM, and, and the ACM website is? Uh, that's click, tr I think what it is now, it's just, they, they used to have that, but I think it's our channels, O U R C H A N N. E L S dot org, and that's the Alliance for Community Media. They used to have ACM, but it somehow got stolen or no, they maybe sold. lost it or something. Sold. But it's now our channels, and there they've got all the facilities across the country. They've got a lot of information, a lot of archive stuff. Mm -hmm. And well, you were it, talking about that. Yeah, but they do not have anything there because they just assume that everybody, the producers, are part of this great wondrous thing where all the administrators are also. There are issues that produce, and there's not a single site that I can see for producers as a distinct group, a class. No. I don't know if that's a class or not, but the, and I think there's a, there's an opportunity for that. And what we want to do is try and understand the realities and the significance of that, and that's why we've got the ACAP. Um, Meeting with these illustrious people, meeting here on this December, this May 16th, talking these things over. There's a lot to be done, but I think I, I still think it's three or four months out before we're going to get it together, researching independently and individually, and so on, to where we'll finally get a structure in order and all that sort of thing. What do you think, Carl? By September. Um, maybe September, September, August, October. Because I've got a lot to learn. I, I think maybe we ought to head in two directions. One okay. is a structured direction and allow those that are interested in structure to pursue structure and then allow others that are independent and non-structural to, to try to head for the unorganized development that can be done without the bureaucracy. I fear bureaucracy. I do too, and, yeah. And I think that having individuals go out and do things that they're capable of doing can be done without bureaucracy. And yeah. I think that bureaucracy, yeah. if, if it's going to be done, can be done by those that want it. So let's see how we, if we can have an organization that's well, split. Yeah, oh, split or oh, yeah, okay. I, we, we, that's come up, right? Right yeah. from, the, from the day they made me president for a year for good or ill or everything, uh, I sensed the group. There were a whole bunch of people there, and I sensed that they didn't want because when you start thinking structure in the normal way, you're thinking of mimicking the successful institutions within the established order. And what one of the things we want to be able to holding out is the idea that what we're doing is not mimicking the established order. We're going to, in a certain sense, subsume the established order with a new way of doing things. And so the Roberts rules and the way that the unions operate or the others operate or the other interest groups and everything do not necessarily apply. Or the bylaws or the notions of how things are structured don't apply necessarily to what it is we want to do. So what we want to do is find out what the realities are in a new way and realize the potentiality other than within the system. I think the system in place is not adequate to what the future requires. I don't know. I, th I think that maybe a structured... If that's what we mean structured by structured path, Robert's rules... Right. And a structured path bylaws. might lead one direction and it may be useful, but a non-structured path might also lead to another thing and it isn't necessarily incompatible. They may both be within the same organization. Like, 
like IBM used to have IBM fellows, and they would allow people that were at the top of the hierarchy to do any kind of research they wanted, as long as it had potentially some ap commercial application for IBM. They had seven IBM fellows that were given two or three, four years of freedom to do anything they wanted. Well, that's what we've done yeah. for ourselves yeah. in yeah. ACAP. We've yeah. sort of held off on the idea of let's mimic IBM right. and their model or the model of the Congress or the model of the system or ABC or something, or experience with people, particularly people who've been experienced in that world where you have to have proxy fights and you have to have all these kind of things that you have to work about and just give ourselves a period to try and understand things informally and get some of the information and then come around to setting the structure in place. But instead, so instead, let's have a structure that will explain to George how he ought to do his, his uh, producing or how he ought to do his, his uh, the yeah, work on, good. yeah, and we ought to have a structure that will explain exactly what you, uh, what yeah. George should do. Yeah, and also get to some things, <laughs> things that have some practical value here and now, to the people that are involved in public uh, access. And would you listen to them? If we had a rules on how you were to operate. <laughs> well, I, I, communication is good. I mean, you know, but the, one of the beauties of public access is the freedom of the individual. Yeah. yeah. There's no well, so so we're, we're not inclined to really want those rules imposed on us. We, no. we, we can't. And, and therefore, a lot of us are objecting to it. But those that want the rules ought to go ahead and make rules. And well, they, they, they can, can, they can propose. Well, they can live by them themselves, or they can propose them, and then they can try and bring them up, like uh, John's great guy. Yeah, but, but let, let, let John and any group that wants those rules actually go out and do things under those rules, well, and, he, and that'll be useful. That'll no, be but he doesn't, want, he doesn't want that. He wants us to do it under those rules. Oh, no, so no, that no we well, get those, there's structure. two sections. Yeah. We, we could split it up, one in the rule-oriented section, the other independent-oriented section, and, and let's see what happens. One thing I know, a technical well, question. We're Tech doing that. Yeah, a technical yeah. question is, can people in New Jersey and Connecticut watch Amazon program? They can on their computer. On, or only on the internet? Yeah, there's nothing, there's no cable connection. Well, we, 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 we would like to be able to, Have to market our shows and with digital, we, we should be able to, like, we could, we could have a, uh, we could have a newsletter to every... Mm -hmm. That's a good idea to have newsletters. And, and to say these shows are available for you to run and we would like yeah. you to, to do it. How are you going to get it to them? Well, we have to have a database of email addresses of the people that, that are interested. No, but in they would have, you're talking about people in local access places around the country? Yeah, we're going to have to make, we might have to hire somebody in yeah. India. Possibly, and I resent that, but I, I do it myself. That, I don't think we should do to, that. Well, you can't hire anybody. Because but within the way, uh, we're going to, anything that's yeah. going to happen within ACAP <coughs> is not going to be hiring anything. Then the less and then, what, but, 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 we are going to sing the praises of anybody who becomes successful in that world and put it, we should have a uh, hustler's corner that they really hit it big and they made the big contract and celebrate them in their own work in terms of the society in general. What, what but not know? within ACAP. Yeah. But what we could do, we might be able to hire somebody in India for three dollars an hour, to uh -huh. really, yeah, yeah well, absolutely, I'm not kidding, three dollars an hour, yeah. or we can do it in America under John's rules. We can have John pass a rule that says that the members have to do each each member has to put no. in four hours. That sounds too much like it does. They're not going to do it. I'm not going to do but that. But supposing that we collect. A thousand dollars and hire somebody in India to put together an email list of every cable access organization that can be found in the United States. Well, why don't we? They got it on there. Why don't we? We can do it on. We can find things on the on the our channels. They got all the facilities there and the addresses and the it, people. It never is complete. We, it's yeah, well, no, but, no, but the things can be done. What's an R If channel? somebody's interested in doing yeah. it. That's all. They don't have to be hiring three dollars an hour. Well, you don't have to hire people. Then, then we ought or to have we ought to have lookup parties where we have this room here or some other room where you invite fifty people in to do research for us and put together a list and have a party once a month. Well, how are those lists gathered? Isn't there ways they to do it? Like you have to look at internet and look for tele telephone listings for cable access. I bet you we're going to be able to. What we want to have are people doing it because that's what they want to do and they're involved with something. We want to inspire access producers across the country, not because they're going to make a dollar out of it. Yeah. That's what you want to get. I exactly want to get away from that. They're doing it because that's what they want to do. That's just the way I think we ought to give it a chance. 
to be so that people are doing it because it's something worthwhile. And then we've got to come to some understandings of where a, a, a cable sits in. What is it? Is there something there worth doing? Is there something worth being involved in? Does it have contact with the larger issues confronting America we haven't got or the world? Does it have some reason to be associated with it because um, it's inspiring? And not because you're going to make a dollar at it. Because there's so many people that, you know, or even bring that into the equation. I think it could be done on a voluntary basis within the organization. But allow other people to be successful as all get out and celebrate them if they are within the society you, you, you in general. Might, you might be and then better. if they learn some of those things, they can bring it back here and put it you, back you, where... You, you might be better getting a list of people and, and pitching them for money and getting financing here and using the money to get some of the basics that we need. For example, you don't really want to require volunteers to get electrical services for our organization. We, we, you buy them. You buy telephone services. You might also buy list creation services. I mean, certain services we, we can buy, and it's easier for us to just raise the money even passing a hat around and raise the money if we really want to jumpstart the organization, we might be able to put together a list relatively inexpensively, but to try to demand that people do it on their own time mm -hmm. may be a little bit uh, too much. I think that's the way to go. I think it's the way to go. That the, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing for free. I mean, that's, that's uh, and, and, and the reason is... Then the first thing is that you, you start doing it and get others to, and then get the, and do a a show on why you are so happy doing that work and you want others to watch well, no, it, it. it. It's called, it's called, it, it, it's, just, it's different. As soon as money comes into any relationship between people, but you pay it's a Con complete, Ed. no, Con Ed, I'm talking about us. I'm not talking about Con but Ed. Certain, certain services we need to make this what? organization work. What do work. we need, really? We, we, we need a list of... Uh, you should start serving, you should start charging ACAP for all your legal expertise. No, you could no. be doing at least 200, you've been sitting here 200, you should have been getting four or six hundred dollars for your advice but, to ACAP but, but, because you've got legal but, ability to even sell we're, we're, the using, we're using electricity. And I should be charging you're, rent and electricity. Paying. Yeah, I'm paying it. And I'm, you, I should be charging yeah. rent for the people to be here. And as soon as we get caught up in that, like in sex, as soon as you start getting caught up in something where there's money exchanged between people rather than Free circulation between people involved because they believe in the thing or something or something don't, worthwhile. Don't buy postage. Have the members deliver it by hand. By it's email. Of, no, you by, don't by have hand. To pay. Do it by hand. Well, to the degree that you can. But I think you can get around it. I think it can be done. Or the costs are coming down to where everything is practically free. That's what you can do at m &N. You can do it for no money. You want to get away from that. Not to encourage that or not to even tap into it. But get it there so that you've got a source. And there's opening there because everybody else is going that way, trying to make money for themselves or for their pay their rent or whatever. And there's opportunity by going in the opposite direction because that's the way the future's going. And in order to do that, you've got to have some view of how the transformation of the society, including the economic philosophy, political philosophy, and everything else, is going to be transformed by what's emerging out. And the future needs a re a, 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 an operating manual for the for the system that the that the that the current situation doesn't provide, and if you're onto something where you can do that, you can inspire people. I think there's a little bit of Obama in that. He's trying, but he's working within a practical. It's not exactly practical sounding. Is Obama in? No, I think he's going to be a candidate. Now the question is, it, it, I had a funny joke. They said that maybe he can make a. Hillary, his uh, running mate, and I said they're going to need food testers like in, in Shakespeare's <laughs> right. Richard the Third, you know. But is, is that, Edwards in now? No, I don't know. The, I don't. Know. I don't know. I think it might be a good team. No, you. I don't know. And I think Obama's opening up on trying to open up on. Maybe I may be wrong, but I think he's trying to open up on something new, something that's subsuming, rather than just accepting the way things have been done or taking our models from the successes within that. That system is out of sync with what's required. Something big and encompassing and new is needed, probably beginning with economic theory or political theory or something like that. Because it's a wrap. I bet you it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I think it's a wrap now for this meeting. We call this meeting to an end, George. You have to call it. You're the, you're the one in the oh. booth. Uh, uh, you think we should uh, call this a wrap?
Well, we'll call it temporary wrap. Temp- uh, to be continued. Uh, to be continued, ladies and gentlemen. To, to be continued on Monday. There's many unanswered questions. Yes, we're going to tape that a, Monday thing, too. We're going to be addressing the, critical, the critical, yes, sure. The critical thing is uh, what happens with these, uh, 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 the meeting uh, on the Tuesday, uh, May 20th. The 20th. Yeah, I'm going to be PM. going to that for sure. Are you going to that? Uh, Do you I have the address? I have it in my notebook. Too. I want to get it before you leave to make sure. I'll, I'll get it from somewhere else. I'm going to go to that. Dan wants me to talk. Okay. I add uh, that thing. And also, uh, I'm sure the public exactly hearing on the Verizon. I want to look at you. Did you look at You're going to be here Monday? Uh, yeah, Monday, yeah. Tyrone will be here giving a lecture on Yeah, seminar. Tyrone, our guy, yeah. he's going to talk about things. He does some of your tech way. He was good. Yeah, he's going to be talking about the uh, uh, DVD. I want to learn about the what DVD the unit to yeah. get, and also yeah, about. Um, he said Panasonic. That's what yeah. he said. So I want to learn because I play. I, I make a DVD and you can't play it. I mean, it won't play. Here, it. here is the one you gave me. Didn't work. It did not it did work. Not work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Five minutes, three minutes. It 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 pinked out. For good. Yeah. I'll be dead. I had it, another. And, one. and I looked and I did the uh, VHS and it worked perfectly. The VHS yeah, yeah. But the DVD did That's not. That's correct. Now, what about... Okay, I think, think I have think. another one I want to give you before you leave. Okay. I'm going to give it to you. I have another one, I think. I'll look. But you see, have I got a machine where I'm making something and they don't work? Some of them have. Okay, so that's the problem. I want to find out from so, and we got to think a year out. They got this thing dazzled gradually. That thing of uh, Emily Dickinson that you cannot make it all the truth available because every man would be blind because of the splendor of it. So be patient and do things gradually. And I'm thinking three or four months and then maybe a year. But that I think we ought to really think about inspiring things in a very large and transformative way. Because I think the system in place, I think the odds are if you were Nick the Greek, they're going to blow the whole damn thing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way if uh, those forces of retrogression and everything. uh, Anyway, that's, did you call a rap already? Yes. He called a rap, ladies and gentlemen. The director is sitting this all over. Thank you, Mr. DeMille, for your fine direction. We appreciate that. Everything I know, I learned from Charlie Rhodes. Okay, there you go. Charlie Rhodes is good. Okay, so this is May, what is it again? May 16? May 16. May 16, coming up almost on to May 17 with the clock running. Oh, here's a question. And this is the, oh, you want to, okay, add a little something? Just, no, 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 I'll add anything. I just want to get, your, feed, want to get your feedback. Yeah. What do you guys think of Channel 13 and, and uh, Channel 13 Public Television and NAPL and National Public Radio? What kind of format? I really like Channel like? 13, but I don't I don't pay attention to radio. Okay. That's myself. What do you think? I have not heard radio in quite Oh, well, Channel 13. I like Channel 13. They have good program. It's probably corporate sponsored. Well, it's, yeah. It's it is. Grand. I, I'm, I'm really more addicted to cable. When I do look at television, I very seldom don't, don't see any Relevant. I, I, I've been looking more at uh, shows I shouldn't look at. Do you watch a lot of that kind? Do you watch a lot of What kind of shows? Well, O'Reilly, for example. Uh huh. Oh, you watch it? Yeah, I do. For a joke or for fun? Well, I just learn how to just, just to. No, I, mean, I, I, I try to. You know, I, I'm trying to see why he does have such a. a <coughs> and, why did you have such a that, that he has a he has a remarkable. Uh, number of things that go on the screen that it's done well. I mean, he has good presentation, not personally, mm. but that he has a lot of the glitz that, that allows you to keep interested in a variety of things. Mm. I think that's useful for a show. Yeah. Uh, but I, I look at all these guys. I mean, I... I, I the uh, news channel... Yeah, I, I look at all these cable CNN? shows. I, I, I look at the cable. Yeah, 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 I do too. Yeah. I, I don't really look at the others. Let me ask you, do you watch the comedy stuff? Daily. Only when my son forces me to look at it. So you, you're not picked up on Stephen that. Colbert or I look John at him, Stewart? Yes. I look at Stewart. Stewart was, yeah. Colbert is really yeah, clever. Yeah, Colbert, yeah. yeah he's something. I, all these names, they're, 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 but they're almost all cable, right? Yeah, it's all cable. Yeah, it's all yeah. cable. Okay. But Channel 13, it's good. They got Nova, they got Frontline, they get good stuff. But less, less often. Yeah. Less often. Okay, well, that's... Um, I should do it probably more often, but... Well, there's only 24 hours in a day, and yeah. you spend so much of the time. Yeah. I've never known anybody who work as hard as Carl Pierce. And well, I, I can put in 18, 20 hours a day when I'm when necessary. Oh, really 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 oh, what is your yeah. background? What is the stock that is so sturdy? It's just, uh, you is know, it Scandinavian? I, I, it's Scandinavian. Well, it's Scandinavian, but, yeah. it, but it's actually... Viking. 
it, it's more believing that you it's it's accepting responsibility and doing it. I mean, yeah. Uh, be, uh, yeah. As a lawyer uh, in, in litigation, you mm -hmm. have deadlines that you must meet, otherwise your client. Loses. That's right. You, that's you, right. You, that's you right. just have to honor them. Yeah, yeah. And and you learn to honor them. You learn to prioritize. In fact, there's yeah. one rule that I have: never do anything at all that you have to do. I like that. Which will give you plenty of time to do what you want to do. Well, wait but wait. only do what you have to do when it's the last moment, when you really have to do it. Because oh, if you start doing what you have to do right now, you'll never have time to do what you want to do. I think you've got an axiom yeah. that rings through the ages, I yeah. think. Yeah. You have if, you, to, if you want, you have to do what you have to do. You know, don't do what you have to do. Right. Only do what you want to do. That's right. Right. And but, but when the time comes when it's almost too late to do what you have to do, that's the time to do that. Oh. You get it? Put it off until you really have to do it that way. Yeah, but then because, you're going to be practically we, running, aren't no, you? No, well, then you, get, then you have all the things that you want to do that you can do. And then you say, oh, my God, i got to get that other thing done. Then right. you switch. And, and all the other stuff is already right, done. The other stuff is secondary. The stuff you have to do is secondary. Right. Do what you want to do first. And, and then and all do it with all my guts. And, and, then, and, and, then, <laughs> and then do what you have to do, but put enough... To, Organize what you do so you know how long it'll take. You give you a little margin for safety, uh, but don't do what you have to. Like if I have a brief due mm -hmm. ten days from now, mm -hmm. do you think I'm going to go home and work on that tonight? Do no. you really <laughs> believe I'm going to work on that tonight? No. no. Uh, I mean, I, I know how much time approximately I need to no, do, it, and I will wait, but not too. I mean, I, I leave a little bit of safety here, mm -hmm. but but that gives me nine days to, to do, do the things work. I wanted to. Okay, and the thing we ought to be encouraging in the world at large is make as much possible time available to all the citizens to do what they want to do. Do what you what want they to have do. To do. Absolutely. And we should have an uh, army of attorney generals that are going to enforce that ethic. Right? Turn, turn on those the address. You'll see them on your I don't have it in my book. Okay, good. Okay, well, well I guess, let, let me turn off this and let's see. So that's the end. This is the 16th and uh, that's the end of this. We're going to put it up on YouTube and this is an ongoing thing and we've got a lot to learn and everything. So this is the 16th, the Carl Pearson, George Sotorella, Harold Channer, and the dog Jackson. And uh, Why don't you put the year down? Uh, oh, the year be in the, the Christian era 2008. <laughs> okay, over and out. No, how do I stop this?